Hello and welcome to Pop Along RC and today we are talking LiPos. Now LiPos are dangerous batteries and they can explode. As you've seen from the little intro there and the footage, the damage caused by uh, LiPo fires is, is, yeah, it is pretty crazy stuff. I didn't really take it seriously, I've got to be honest. Looking at all these um, images of cars on fire and houses being burnt down, sheds being burnt down. I always thought to myself, well, that won't happen to me because I'm a responsible RCer and I take care of my batteries. However, mistakes do happen, problems can occur, and this week I had a little bit of a problem with a LiPo. If you're as old as me, you probably started your RC journey with the NICAD batteries, then went on to the NIMS, and more recently got into the LiPos. Now, I've been doing RC for a very long time, and I've seen lots, I mean lots, of um, messages and things on the internet about LiPo fires and the risk that they pose. Um, and I was thinking to myself, well, I've been using LiPos for nearly 10 years, and I've never had an issue. And I was trying to think, it's got to be a bit of a myth. I can't, I can't see where the problem is. Surely over like 10 years, I would have definitely had at least one issue with a battery. So the other day I had an awesome chilled out afternoon racing um, around the local park with Mark. home and chuck some batteries on charge and I noticed that it was a really strong chemical smell it was quite an aggressive smell um, went over to the charger and I discovered that one of the batteries was literally it ballooned it was massive unplugged it ran straight out to the garden where I chucked it into the big barbecue and I reckon 30 seconds later bearing in mind it's not no longer on charge, 30 seconds later, there was a massive boom, uh, a massive orange glow, followed by lots and lots of smoke. Now, I didn't have the phone with me at the time because my priority was to um, obviously keep the house safe, not get the footage, but I did get my camera for the aftermath. That's all right. That's... Could have been my car room. Let's see. How many batteries are there? That's one battery. That's one battery? Yeah. That's what happens. So this battery was on charge and it smelled a bit funny and started to go puffy. So I just rushed it out. Puffy? And uh, put it in the uh, barbecue. And that was quite a big explosion, wasn't it? Can you imagine so how big that was? I didn't see it. Well, I did see the flash. But, um, would it damage the house with the middle the It would have burnt the house down if it was indoors. So if I was a minute later getting to that battery, I would have probably been looking at thousands of pounds worth of damage, um, putting my family at risk as well because the the room that the batteries were charging in was underneath uh, the kids' bedroom. So do you know what? It's really not worth the risk. So I definitely need to reconsider my charging behaviors and uh, get a new plan in place. It could have very easily been uh, like you see in all these pictures where unattended lipos have gone up and uh, almost burnt down houses, burnt down old sheds and things like that, garages. The thing is when these things go, I did not realize to what extent they go up. They really do go when they go. Uh, this battery that went was a 3S, 
Um, we have got 4S batteries. We have in the past had 6S batteries. So when these things go, they are like little bombs. So I guess you're kind of wondering why have I got a barbecue next to me in today's video? Well, let me just show you what we've got inside this wonderful barbecue. Now in here, it is a used barbecue, but in here is where I keep some of my old swollen battery packs. So there's a 4S that's a bit swollen. There's a uh, 3S that's seen better days. We've even got some of these 1S batteries that they are like the, the outer shell is starting to crack. They're so puffy. Um, cool, there's another one. That one's really rocky, that one. Um, so we've got some 1S LiPos. We've got some 2S race packs there that have swollen, starting to go and blow. Uh, we've got one in a case here, which tells me this one is a particularly swollen one. Let me have a look. Yeah, that one is mega swollen, that one. Um, so, God, blimey. Yeah, that can go back in there. So, why do I keep all these batteries inside a barbecue? Well, the thing is, barbecues are made to contain fire. And the last thing I want is to have these lipos exploding and uh, burning the house down. Any batteries that are starting to swell stay in the barbecue. Um, all other batteries I have got in lipo safe bags. Um, there are various types of lipo safe bags from the smaller ones that you put individual batteries in to the larger ones for storing multiple batteries and then obviously we've got the even bigger ones for my basher batteries and things like that. But a little bit of a wake up call for me uh, this week and I will definitely be revisiting my lipo charging uh, routines and making it a lot safer. So I am going to be emptying my barbecue. I'm going to be taking it down to the local dump and disposing of the lipos appropriately. So everyone out there, I would definitely recommend rethinking your lipo charging routines. Now, um, I'm not saying that you have to go out and buy a barbecue to store your batteries in, but you know what? Just be mindful that it can happen at any time. I have to be honest, I was getting a little bit complacent because as I say, over a decade of charging batteries, never had a problem and uh, it's only a matter of time till you do. So don't take risks, be safe. Use uh, lipo sacks when charging your batteries. Never leave them um, unsupervised. Keep an eye on those batteries and hopefully you can stay safe and keep enjoying the hobby.